So at the moment you're going to be detained for a search okay. uh, under Terrorism Act. Under Terrorism Act. Okay, yeah. All right. my name's PC Latham. This is PC Cody here. We're from Newby Police Station. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to Big Man Audits. Today we're going to be looking at Coley Burks, who's gone to Newbury Police Station, <clears throat> and we're going to see how he's been treated. He was flying a drone over there, and consequently he has been stopped, and he's been detained under the Terrorism Act. Now, let's see how it all plays out. Remember guys, public photography is not a crime, and we're going to break it down for you. Alright, it's the, the people... Look at all this kit we've got. So, man. guys, as you can see there, uh, Cody Burks is using a DJI Mini 2 drone. Well, we've got a whole it's bag exactly of kit. the same as my so one. This is Newbury exactly Police here. Station. The we're law station the must have more. an operator's ID, whereas um, mine's displayed so yeah, there. So on that, you don't need a license in which Hello? to fly it. However, Hello? I do. Hello? It's always advisable for They're insurance. And because people don't understand that this is a 249 yeah. gram drone, it can fly yeah. over buildings, yeah. residential areas, yeah, and small crowds. Do I need to? Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to bring it in then? Yeah, no, I'm bringing it in, but. Oh, is it coming automatically? Yeah. Oh, that's alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much does that cost you? I'm in a leg. So, can I not fly it over there? Secure area, mate. Okay, so as you can see now, the officers stated to Coley Burks that this is a secure area. It makes absolutely no difference. The airspace is not controlled by the police. It's controlled by the Civil Aviation Authority. And when you pass your pilot's license in which to fly these drones or you take the test that's allowing you to have an operator's ID, you're taught that you can't fly anything bigger than 249 gram drones over a, you know, within 50 meters of both people and buildings. Okay, These small drones are allowed and are exempt from that because they're of a lower class. The idea is if this lands on your head, it's not going to kill you. It's going to hurt maybe, um, but it's not. Uh, going to do that. The fact is this is a very sophisticated piece of machinery. It's very small, it's very light and it has a gimbal camera at the front that is able to scrutinize, go in and actually zoom into things. And if you've seen some of my other YouTube videos and YouTube channels you'll actually see us using this to really good use. So just because the police officer says it's a secured area it is absolutely irrelevant for drone footage. So what could my drone possibly do? Like what? Well, why are you flying over there? Just interested in the area. So I'll take a few shots. Okay, so Coley here is explaining that he's interested in taking a few shots in the area. Um, however, he doesn't have to explain anything. You know, it's always better just to say to somebody, I'm taking some drone footage, I'm using it for my YouTube channel, and I'm performing an audit. But that wouldn't make great uh, YouTube videos. Um, however, it would have actually calmed the suspicion of the police officers down straight away. Remember, you don't have to give your details if you haven't been suspected or have committed a crime. So it's really important that you understand what the truth is and what the legislation is. Because often or not, the police officers, as you'll see from other videos that we'll be releasing, will use bully boy tactics or bully girl tactics to be able to extract your personal details from you. So be very, very careful when you're handing things out because they will run you through their little computer and the more they run you, the more checks they make on you, the more you will flag. So, and what will happen is if you get caught with a vehicle and they will actually put a marker or could put a marker on the vehicle, which means you're going to be stopped an awful lot. So don't forget, you know, to, if you do find yourself in that situation, you can always go for police harassment. Okay. You're flying it in now though anyway. Yeah, but I can fly it back up there. So need to. Why don't you come in and speak to us and we can tell you what's out there if you want to have a chat about what's going well, on. Well, can I get a tour? A tour? Yeah. Well, we can go speak to the desk and get you a tour. Okay, so here you can see Officer 1901, or PC as we call them in the United Kingdom, um, clearly stating, go in and we'll see if we can get you a tour. Now, I guarantee you, if Coley was to walk into that police station, into the reception, he'd be thrown out of the main door and told, you cannot film in this police station. 
once again, that is also wrong. Under Section 33 of the Criminal Justice Act of 1972, you are entitled to film anywhere in a public place and anywhere that is publicly accessible. So, for example, walking into a car park, walking into an open public building. Remember, police stations are public buildings, despite whether they say they're private property or not. I don't know, I can't I don't know, I'm just, I'm just here to use the drone. It's coming back. I think it might have landed over here or something. Are you local? Guy off YouTube. No. Now ask each of you to identify. Push again. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, you know how this goes. Yeah, I'll PC 3405 Claudia. Ah, oh, thanks. Can you be police station? 1901 Laver. Okay. 1560 PC Reef. Alright. OK, so this is a good idea to do if ever you get stopped. Um, the first thing you need to do is identify the officers you're actually talking to. Now, we all carry body cams, those of us who do auditors, so we can actually keep this recorded. However, it's always worth noting two things. An officer must identify. There's three pieces of information that they can identify with. Obviously, their collar number or shoulder number, their name and which station they're actually based at. So that there is a course of regress should something actually happen. The other thing to remember is, is always keep your details to your chest. Do not hand them out. Let them do the work. If you've committed a crime, then you're going to get caught. However, it's the three pieces of information that you really must get every time you're engaging. Also, please remember if an officer is not in police uniform, I would also ask to see a warrant, and in which case you'll actually see there a particular identification before you carry on the conversation, because they could just be a member of the public or just a member of staff. Obviously, I'm sure you can understand. Right. We're just concerned why someone's flying a drone over the top of the, the back of the yard, yeah? Right. Obviously, there's your reasons behind that. Yeah, that's what we're trying to find out, really. Oh. Uh, as mentioned, just interested in the kind of bird's eye view of, of the top of the station, so... Okay. Earth, yeah, I know exactly. So this, so this is really interesting, right? So the police officer has just said you can get all of this information from Google Earth. Exactly right. And any helicopter or any aircraft flying above, whether it's civilian or whether it's military or whether it's law enforcement, they would be able to see the same information. So a drone makes no difference. He's just sort of counteracted everything that they've said. The other thing I want to talk about as well is, as you can see, most police officers now, they carry body cams. They must, at the earliest opportunity, invite you to tell you, sorry, that they are filming you on the body cam. Remember, as an independent person, you are not held by the bounds of GDPR. But as an organisation, such as the police, they are. So they must inform you at the earliest opportunity. Be very wary, because in 90% of cases... They don't. And you have no cause to regress and they will not tell you about it. So always ask, are you filming me? If they say they're filming you, the next question would be is, why have you not taken the opportunity to tell me it is in your policy? Could it really disrupt any sort of security arrangement? Yeah, well you can't, I'm sure you can have someone come and chat to you to see why. Mm. And if that's your reasons and that's all it is, it just, you know, have a little nose around and that's, <laughs> that's all yeah, it is. You're within your right to do so, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's only a little drone. I'm not too sure where it is, but I'll find yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on the floor somewhere. But I'm not it's sure where. Yeah. Have a look. It's on the floor now. Mark, you lift it back up again to bring it out of here again. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Sorry, mate, your best bet. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it a bit, mate. Lift it back up, see where it is. Yeah, go on then. How'd you do it? I don't want to fly in case we break That it. looks Definitely like the bridge fly. to me. Yeah, I don't want to that. <laughs> I know where that is. So yeah? Do you? you are the wrong... <laughs> are you, I doubt if you're going to get in there, mate. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll fly, fly it again. It might be the best way to get out. Keep getting off. I'm still new to this myself. How long have you had it for? Take off. Uh, I got it yesterday. Oh, okay. Please See, it's really quite right. interesting because I love the DJI Mini. It's very, very easy to fly. It will go straight up in the air. You can fly it back to yourself and land it down. It's, it's really quite cheap. The, the DJI 2 is about 550 quid on Amazon. I don't know why it flew all the way over there. Look, it didn't go in the canal. It can drift sometimes, can't it, as well? I think so, yeah. I've got to be honest, I haven't flown myself, so I doubt I've been in the But, uh, are you local or...? Why, why? Okay, so you can hear the officer clearly ask Coley if he's local. 
this is what they call fishing. They're fishing for information. Okay, so if you're local, then they'll sort of circulate your description around, see if you're locally known. Okay, remember, you don't have to give the officers anything at this particular point. It's always good to try and cooperate just a little bit. Um, but if you're making auditing videos, you'll make them boring. But as, as I would say to you, listen, let them come to you. You know, we prove time and time again, these auditors, that a lot of the time they twist the truth, they manipulate you and they say things that you haven't said. Um, I've been a victim of it. And as you'll see for a lot of the other audits that I'm going to be carrying out, you'll see there's a lot of victims to it. Are you looking? You ask us questions. We can ask you questions. I only asked you to identify. Do you want to identify yourself? As no. Well? <laughs> you know, you know how this goes, man. You know of what this is. Yeah, yeah. What is this? What do you know about this? Yeah, you can ask. It's always interesting, yeah, it's like, you know. Yeah, they yeah. do know what auditors are. I'm I just think they just try and exercise their power a bit. Yeah, be careful, because that is sticking out. Let me hold your phone so you can talk. Be a good idea. Yeah, go on if you don't mind. Yeah. Give you a call. Yeah, that wouldn't be. I only got it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Where'd you get it from? Uh, Amazon. Yeah, you can hear him talking about so his buying of the, of the drone. I don't really see, like, you spoke to me. Yes, it is. Is there any legislation that can stop you? We want to know why. We want to know why you do that sort of. Well, you said something about... So, they're still fishing as to why that is. Um, now, to end of it, you could have just said... I'm an auditor, I'm auditing it, I want to see what your reaction to me is, um, I want to see what your reaction to the drone is, you don't know the legislations, we do, we pass the qualifications in which to fly these devices, and he could have said that, and that would probably diffuse the situation, um, but once again, it doesn't have to, you know, you, that we have to be suspected of carrying out a crime, or suspected of about to cause a crime, and public photography just isn't a crime. Uh, YouTube, is that what it is, YouTube? You seem to it now so, he's told yeah, them you YouTube. Know, you want us to come have a chat and then we go from there sort of thing and see what happens. Just see how you uh, yeah. react to my filming no, from no. a public space. You see, it's really interesting. He's telling them that how he that, that he's waiting and filming yeah. to see how they're reacting. Now they know he's an auditor. That is, yeah. you've got to be higher than that, have you? That's pretty high, you know. That is pretty high. Yeah, like that's yeah. you wouldn't be able to see it if it was that so high. I can't judge that from here. If it's, if that yeah. high, it's probably gonna be. No, it is high, man. I'm glad you seem to know. Yeah, you know it well. It's like you're. Oh shit! Where is it? Um, oh, yeah, don't. He looks. Uh, he looks like he's quite a newbie with flying these devices. The, the law is you must yes. keep your device within line of sight. Relatively easy to learn them, is it how to fly it? Yeah, a little bit. Usually yeah. you kind of look yeah. at the camera and get it to... I guess he pressed the wrong button and got it to land wherever it was hovering. Instead of asking it to return to base. Do you want to have a look at the drone? Just have interest in Yeah, go on, go on. Like yeah, once he gets used to flying it, um, he'll be able to land it right next door to him. It just seemed a little bit further away. Always remember, guys, if you are flying a drone and police officers are stopping you, uh, ask them to remain quiet while you fly the drone back you to you, just for safety reasons. Oh, not, not too long, actually. Yeah. Uh, each time is, yeah, so it's already on 57, so. 57 more percent? Yeah, so oh, we had three batteries. Like 10, His battery pack at the back's so open, so. Yeah, not too long, to yeah. be fair. So now, Talking about this drone, you know, we are required by law to carry an operator's ID on the drone. I didn't actually see that on there. I'm pretty sure he has got that, but it is a lawful thing that you must do. You must carry that operator's ID. So if it hurts somebody or it gets lost, it's able to locate them. Now, these things are really, really good because they've got GPSs in them and if you can get them to fly home. If he, When he learns how to use it a little bit better from that, he'll, he'll, he'll realise that you can do that with it. Interested in this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, you I see, am. I am. Do you like it? I can't get on myself. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, but no, it's more of a case. Just wanted to come and see what's going on mm -hmm. while you're flying over. Yeah. See, we've ascertained the reasons for that. Yeah. Understand that. So I can go and fly it back over if I like. Like I said, obviously, there is that limit that you just said earlier about the yeah, 150 metres, which you need yeah. to be, obviously. Um, I said, well, I. 
I think McCody's completely wrong there. I think he's obviously... I wonder if he's misleading them a little bit because it is only 50 metres, but the drone is under 250 grams. It's 249 grams. So he can technically fly above their heads and there's nothing they can do about it from a legal standpoint. Only should it fall out the sky and land on his head like a pigeon shit, then they can do something about it, but because it's injuring a member of the public. However, that is a civil case as it wouldn't be deliberate unless he flew it into them. So it's very clear to see that officers with no knowledge about this are quite happy to sit there and um, state facts of which they cannot prove. The reasons are just that they want to have a look and see what's going on around the police station. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. as far as we're concerned, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, just make sure you maintain that 150 metres to the legislation like you seem to know yourself. Yeah, okay? right. no worries. All right. So once All again, good. completely okay. wrong. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks Appreciate for your time, it. Thanks just double check to make sure it's oh. Okay, like what? Well. So... Here, the officers kind of walk away. He's saying, thanks very much. There's been quite a pleasant exchange. There's been no rough stuff, no anger. Um, it's been really good. Coley's acting as if he doesn't know what he's talking about, which I think he does. Um, and all of a sudden, the second officer has said, hang on a minute, I'm talking to someone. And this is where it'll get interesting. Well, I mean, find out if you are a sales and do some checks. Because for all we know, you could be wanted or anything. I could so, be wanted? Could be. Oh, mate, could come on, man. He's just, he's just figured it out. There's no need to be doing all this. So how are you going to find out my name? You might know. You might know who I am. You've been here before, haven't you? I have. Okay, once again, it's looking at... Now they want to find out who the guy is. They want to run these checks. They want to do this, that, and whatever. You've got to be suspected of a crime, and you have to have reasonable grounds of suspicion to be certain. Just because you don't want to give that information, that doesn't make it a crime. OK, so if you're standing there filming outside of a train station in public land, you can film anything the eye can see from public and there is nothing they can do about it. And remember, public photography is not a crime. Now he's fishing. He wants to know who he is. He wants to know where he lives. He wants to know his age, his date of birth and all the other good stuff that they want to find out. So they want to just do some checking. It's just about stamping down authority. I didn't give my name though that time. We're just a bit more concerned. I'm not wanted, when, by the way. We'll be flying out over the station. We just want to double check. Us. Double check. Yeah, you what? Can see why? I can't see why at all. You can. You just suggested that I might be wanted. Like it's taking a bit of a turn for. No, I think it's getting we're, a bit, little bit funny now. To be honest, we just have to try and check people. You don't have to run checks at all. I haven't committed an offence. Why would you need to run a check? See, here you understand that Cody knows what he's talking about. He hasn't committed an offence. So why do you want to run a check? Now, because he's showing a little bit more knowledge than the police think he's got, they're now going to try one more up. You know, we're the ones in charge. We've got the authority. You don't. You are going to learn that you're under us and you obey the rules uh, um, and we enforce the rules. Well, you need to understand what the rules are for them to be enforced. Yep, patiently waiting for them to go back. It's obviously the first station you've flown over them since you bought it. Yeah, I mm -hmm. doubt very much that. Maybe. <laughs> As you can see from other videos we're doing, it's definitely not. So I'm not detained or anything, I can leave, can't I? I just want to see, I just want to see how this one plays out. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I said, we're just uh, having a chat at the moment. This is what people want to see after all. Yeah, of course. People want to see how in police interact with members mm. of public and any situations, and that's what we're here for, isn't it? That's it. Is that your phone on top of the controller then? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Is it compatible with any phone? Or uh, I think you just need to be able to download the app. It's like a okay. DJI flight app, yeah, yeah. and then once you've done that, don't say my name. We're in a public place. You guys, don't say my name. If you figured out my name, right. I don't know because we're in public. Okay. Could be breaching GDPR. Um, I've got some concerns. The reason is you're flying it over a sensitive area. Right. Yeah. So although you can get certain things on um, the internet, yep. Obviously. Comes and goings of the police station. Okay, so how what are we doing then? So at the moment you're going to be detained for a search okay. uh, under terrorism act. Under terrorism act. Okay. Yeah. All right. My name is PC Layden. This is PC Cody. We're from Newby Police Station. 
okay, grounds are that you're flying a drone over the top of the police station. Obviously, there's bars and railings there for a reason. Okay, so let's look at the terrorism act that they're going to talk about here. So um, because of the misuse of police powers, Section 44 of the Terrorism Act was actually rescinded. They no longer made it exist. So under Section 43 and photography of the Terrorism Act of 2000, officers have the power to stop and search a person who they reasonably suspect to be a terrorist. Now, here they have to have reasonable grounds. Simply flying a drone over, taking pictures, is not considered reasonable grounds. Okay? The purpose of the stop and search is to discover whether the person has in their possession anything which may constitute evidence that they are a terrorist. Okay, so let's look at what a terrorist would be. Simply making photograph, taking photographs, making photographs does not constitute terrorism. They have officers have the power to view digital images contained on mobile telephones or cameras carried by a person search under S43 of the Terrorism Act 2000 to discover whether the Im images constitute evidence that the person is involved in terrorism. Now that's quite a wide open thing. What would you be considered to be involved in terrorism? Pictures of you cuddling Osama bin Laden. Well, that would probably get you into hot water. However, simply having footage over a police station is not considered to be reasonable grounds. And flying a drone over a police station, gathering footage, would not be considered to be reasonable grounds. Now, a lot of officers would call this hostile reconnaissance. Well, hostile reconnaissance is if you are planning to take something down. So if you are stopped under the Terrorism Act and you are in this particular case going to be searched under the Terrorism Act, the first few pieces of information is that you must try and find out the officer's name, collar number and what station he's attached to, whether it's being recorded on his body cam. If you And I would also insist on that if you are not covering a body cam because it will protect you and your rights. The third thing that you must make sure is what he's searching you for. So he's researching you for terrorist articles, if you like, and whether he expects to find it. The other thing I would also encourage you to do is get a copy of your search uh, as well. So you, know, you get a paper copy of it, insist on actually having that, because it's, if you've not done anything and you're simply taking pictures, is what would be considered an unlawful detainment and search, and therefore you could make a private prosecution and lots of these auditors do that to teach the guys a lesson into what you can and cannot do. The Terrorism Act is not designed for police officers to abuse that act to try and clamp down on public photography. So we'll go back and see how we get on. Right. So we've got some concerns at the minute, so you're going to be saying, do you want to turn that off in a minute? Can I keep it in my hand? Yeah. Are you going to put me in cuffs? No, so no, the officers obviously want him to turn the camera off, and he's absolutely right, I wouldn't turn it off either. Press pause. I don't need to press pause. That's recording anyway, isn't it? Yeah, but I need to, I need to keep this in my hand. Can you not grab my hand like that, please? Like, I'm not going to obstruct the search. No, it's fine. Just, just I don't need to do that, though. Oh, no, you need to. Let's keep recording. Yeah, go Okay, so also an officer does have the power to seize those cameras, but you can show them the content of that showing you flying over. And once again, well, no, it's said, not anything that um, uh, is no, considered like as the, uh, reasonable the, grounds. Terrorism. However, Something also, they officers do well, not yes, have the right and cannot no. delete anything on it's any camera at all or destroy it's any film at any point during the search. Deletion and destruction yeah, can only take place following a seizure if there is a lawful power, yeah. such as a court order that permits such deletion or destruction. And believe you me, flying over a police station with a drone, looking down at police vehicles, is not a lawful detainment. So as you can see, he's already told them what he's using the content for, but they're now trying to enforce their authority above him. Charger. 
just don't look like a hard drive. Set the phone, what can I tell you? Can you show us what you've said? It hasn't got an SD card in it, and it's not recording. I'll show you. Yeah. And if I don't show you what you're going to seize it? Yeah. No, you don't need my details. You're not getting any details. Terrorism Act doesn't require me to give details. And he's absolutely right. The Terrorism Act doesn't require you to give him any details. So what he could do now is advise the officers that if they consist on asking for his contact details that he will take a private prosecution out against the officers and there's been a few other auditors who've actually done that and the police will have to cough up to a tune of three and a half thousand pounds for actually forcing people to do it. What you can do as well is I would say to the officers under fear of arrest and violence I will provide you with my details but I will also require a private I will also be taking a private prosecution out against both yourselves and the police Hello. department um, regarding your behavior. So I don't have an SD card well there's an SD card in there but there's no space in there but this is what I recorded. Don't know if it's saved. I don't understand what my drone footage could have achieved that, say, Google Earth couldn't have. Things like coming and going to... Yeah, but I can do that from here, can't I? I can just stand here and film the police station. This, this is a place you, I don't think you would, because you know, it's a, you know it's, a, it's a YouTube thing. So I don't really see how the drone... See, it's more about stamping their authority Wait, now. They've say. been told it's a YouTube channel. They know what an so auditor is. The There's the lots of information the that's provided to the police about what right auditors right. do. So this is not good practice of their skills. This really? is certainly, yeah, serious, in my case, I'd be advising Coley to uh, take private prosecution. I'm not going to give my details. Definitely not giving details. If you need to arrest me, then you can arrest me. But I'm going to show you this under duress, but... I'm not, I'm definitely not handing no See, details. See, there you go. He's going to show the footage course, under the duress. The phone. So how is it not under duress? See, I don't even know if it's going to save. So, also, it's quite interesting. You're considered as a so private journalist. So, police officers, if someone is distressed or bereaved and asks the save. police but to I'm not, stop I'm not someone recording no them, their request can be passed on to the media but it can't be enforced. You cannot expect privacy in a public place. I can give you an email. The other thing to remember that officers will also say, you're recording private number plates. You're rec There's nothing a member of the public can do with a private number plate. And if that was illegal, you wouldn't be able to have dash cams, you wouldn't be able to have anything like that. Security systems on the outside of buildings wouldn't be allowed to function for private companies. It just wouldn't happen. So do remember this in the circumstances that it is. And every day of your life, you're being filmed and recorded as you're moving around. Street corners, cities, town centers, everything. Oh, yeah, it was, no, it was just a screen recording. Yeah. And it's also remembered that members of the public and the media do not need a permit to film or photograph in a public place, and police have no power to stop them filming or photographing incidents or police personnel. So when they say, can you stop filming me, the answer, no. They have no power at all to stop you from filming from a public place. This area is public access, isn't it? Right. The back there, that's not public access, is it? Okay, that's for people to stop people from getting it. What could what could a 250 gram drone do? Just take photos. Once again, it's it's totally irrelevant whether it's, it's not, a secure, not secure area a drone or not. Can fly into it. And there's not it's not like there's there's um that's not a restricted airspace so. So, as you can hear, Coley is just saying it isn't a restricted airspace, and he's absolutely right. There is nothing the police officer can do. They can argue hostile reconnaissance, but in the end, this is going to cost the chief inspector a lot of money, and he's going to have to get his wallet out, or he certainly would in my case. We're going to move a bit further forward, just come towards the end. Essentially, they're arguing back and forth, and they eventually arrest him because he won't provide them his name. And legally, he doesn't have to. No. A little bit around here, okay, and then just landed it down there. Yeah, all right. So, 
Yeah. You've hit a tree? Yeah. Okay. So if you've hit a tree, where, which tree did you hit? That one. That's the number. So actually, that's quite reckless. So that's technically an air, air traffic collision. Is it? Okay. So do you are you registered um, with, air, with air traffic at all? No. Right. So this officer does doesn't understand a single thing okay it isn't an air traffic control issue at all this is a 249 gram drone that he's trying to imply is a civil aviation aircraft what would be considered a passenger carrying device it certainly is not it falls under a drone it hit a tree it didn't do too much damage to the tree because the drone only weighs 249 grams it's a complete nonsense all right okay is this going on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah. All right, cool. I'll give you a bit of a lesson as well. Okay. All right. So, this will be interesting. Technically, have you got a register? Have you got a flyer's ID? No. No. Doesn't have require you got an operator's one. ID? No. It does no. require. Right. Okay. If he hasn't got an operator's ID, this is where he's breaking the law. Essentially, you do need one. Okay, you cannot fly these devices without one. So that is exactly right what the officer is just about to say. So what I need is your details so I can report you to the Civil Aviation Authority. Oh, that's you've technically sense. crashed an aircraft. It hasn't it's technically crashed, crashed an aircraft. No. So it's these are unmanned. So you're technically, by the letter of the law, you're a pilot of an unmanned aircraft. Okay. I thought it was a toy. No, they, they fall into their toy category. Right. 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 So absolutely. So the Civil Aviation Authority do not require you to provide your name and address if you hit a tree with your drone, much like they won't require your address if you drop the drone into the water because it's landed in the wrong place or you heavily land your drone, breaking one of the spindles or the blades. This is what the officer is trying to see, but it's used as a manipulation tactic in order to get Cody to hand over his details. It is totally, totally wrong because going on his line of thinking, just simply clipping a tree, falling into the water, bending the aircraft to one side where it clips and breaks one of these propellers. Are you trying to tell me, Mr. Policeman, that if I broke one of the propellers on this, it's technically an air crash and I must notify the Civil Aviation Authority? Well, let me tell you what would happen. The Civil Aviation Authority wouldn't be able to deal with serious crashes because there'd be more than enough idiots like me that would be phoning them up every five minutes going, I broke my blade. Well, you've, you've had an accident. I haven't had an accident. Well, does, to... does it look like there's been an accident? Well, you've just told me you crashed it. He, he told you I crashed yeah. it. All oh, right. So well, there you, you go. The Total team. nonsense. It's another tactic that I would advise so everybody still, to go against. So it's still under civil law. For, so for the Civil Aviation Authority, your drone still has to have an operator's ID license that is absolutely attached correct. to it. You said that's, that's under civil law, is it? So civil law, yeah, because okay. it's it's, but they can still criminally prosecute you. Okay. But that's okay, not down it's to the civil police aviation to authority. So you need to, what you need to do is you need to go onto their website. Mm -hmm. You need to register. There's a not, it's like a nine pound fee you have to pay. Okay. And you need to print, so like a little plastic label, and then, and then your operator's ID, and what you do is it goes somewhere like there okay. the inside of your drone I can do so that's that. if if you crash it or it's involved in a, in any sort of offense mm -hmm. or if it has any sort of impact with an aircraft and it gets found in the debris it means that you can be tracked down okay um, all right and that's part of the governance of allowing people to fly drones sure. yeah and they also right. the other reason they do that if it gets anymore. lost it can be identified as to who it is as well you, you have to remember to these things aren't going to cause that much damage and you're not allowed to fly even these them. small things anywhere near other aircraft yeah so, you, so the operator id is for the person that owns the drone okay and the flyer id is for the person who's piloting the drone now that's okay. incorrect so so because the drone, this particular drone, falls underneath a weight category, you do not require a flyer ID, you do not require a flyer test, purely because it is simply too small. However, it's always worth doing, guys. You know, if you are going to get a drone, they're around 550, 600 pounds on Amazon. They're really, really good. I'm going to upgrade mine very shortly to the DJI Mini 3. Um, but... It, it, they are fantastic pieces of equipment. I would always take the test and always remember if you're using it for personal use, you're going out filming, insurance is £28 a year. It's so, so worth it. Remember, nobody deliberately crashes these things. And for the sake of 28 quid, you know, you might as well get yourself covered. If you buy a drone and you allow me to fly it, I need to have a flyer's ID 
and right, the drone that, I'm using has to have your operator's ID on. That is completely incorrect. Because he it's a lightweight drone, he has to supervise the officer in which to fly it. However, in this particular phase, Coley is in the wrong, and um, you know he could be reported to the civil aviation for uh, aviation for it. But it's not something that's going to get him too much trouble for nine dollars or nine pounds. Sorry. So for mine, okay, I've got the forces operator's ID on my drone, uh -huh. and I've got my own flyer's ID. Sure. Okay. So is that is that a legal requirement? It's a legal requirement, yeah. It's incorrect. It's, it's only a legal requirement for a drone over 250 grand. Under the Civil Aviation Authority. Okay. So they're a civil body, but yeah. they can still prosecute you criminally. So they can prosecute me? Can, well, the, they police, can, can yeah. the police prosecute me for it? Well, I could report you for it to them. So Anybody could report sounds you. Like so a, sounds like a civil matter to me, to, to be honest. It is okay. a civil matter. So and then going it can into turn criminal, into criminal things, okay. yeah, you've got this so it's been told that... Okay, so these officers have decided to search under the Terrorism Act. That's mm -hmm. fair enough. Yeah. Okay, well, you're flying a drone around a police station. It doesn't happen every day. Okay. We have to be suspicious, don't we? Yeah, I do. Right. Okay, so what I want to talk about here is when was the last time a police station in the United Kingdom was actually attacked? I think it was in Northern Ireland in 1972. I may be wrong, but it's been a, a good few years. People don't attack police stations, they attack pedestrians, they attack the general public. If you look at most terrorist acts that happen, they always happen against civilians. They do not happen against the establishment. We do, but... um, well, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if so we weren't My, my interpretation we? of all this is that, in regards to drones, it's a civil thing, no police jurisdiction. Well, so actually, terrorism is no, the only no, thing you're, let, you're letting me get, you're jumping the gun here, all right? Okay. Okay, so they've chosen that act to search you under, all right? There's also other, so have you provided your name and no. address? You haven't? No. All right, so under section 50 of the Police Reform Act, anybody who is committing antisocial behaviour, Okay, so this is really, really interesting. There's no antisocial behaviour here. Antisocial behaviour has to happen around people. There's nobody near him. He's flying a drone on his own. There's no people within at least 50 metres. I can't see any. I haven't seen anything other than the officers. So where is the antisocial behaviour? There's been no reports of a disturbance, no reports of a crime. This is more and more nonsense that's being piled on to force Coley to hand over his personal details. In the area. Okay. So this, you this, this is not antisocial at all. Okay, but flying it round. Let's not go down section 50. I'm not going to huh? give my name. You're, You're not, not going to give your name. name. You might as well arrest me right. in section 50 then. Okay, but then you've also had a near miss with a tree which could have landed on somebody's property causing damage. I'd, I'd say that's quite reckless, really. Okay, it's also raining, it's quite windy. All right, it's probably too windy. If I check now, it's probably too windy to be flying. That's also quite reckless. Okay, you still don't have any jurisdiction. Listen, think, okay. I'm not giving details. Okay, so they, they've okay, not uh, proved Section 50. There's no way. It's no, I'm not going to give details. All right. And Section 34, the inspector can also authorise any object that's been used antisocially to be seized. So we could seize a drone. Right, okay, because you haven't, this right. is once again so a threat. Do, section 34. You, you haven't risked a Let's take a look properly. at Section 34. If you've had 34. a near miss, all right? You also don't have the right operator's IDs. Oh, you don't have the, the flyer's you don't care ID. About miss. Right. You just, you're just a little bit what hard. What you're doing is you're out in public the... and then you're putting members of the public at risk by oh, doing that. Well, what law does that come under then? It's under the Civil Aviation Authority. Okay, civil it's not a policeable event. Yeah, so. but they can still cross. So, if you crashed, if you were flying, there's still the same okay, people. Who's the victim? Sorry? Who's the victim of, of the my public. You put the public at risk. Okay, which all right, which specific member of the so public? So, a man or even a jumbo jet over the top of us, okay? If they have an aircraft, if they crash or a near miss, they still get investigated by the Yeah, but there's a big difference. Okay, <laughs> okay well, we're going to stop it here. Let's yeah. stop it here. Now, we're talking water and wind. We really are. You know, the guy's full of, you know, baloney, isn't it? There is no way a 249 gram drone is going to fly high enough, its maximum altitude is 400 feet, to crash into a Boeing 747 above a residential area. Not even at Heathrow would this thing fly and cause enough damage to crash an aircraft. Now there's those of you say if you fly it into the engine it'll disintegrate and all the rest of it. And it's got a battery in there so it could be potentially explosive. And yes you're probably right. But this drone is a professional drone. It will not work at Heathrow Airport. It just will not do it. It will not fly. Because it is legislated against in which to do it. So 
once again, it's just absolute nonsense by the officers. Now, this officer knows drone law. According, he just said to himself, OK, you know, I'm registered by the police and all the rest of it. You are obviously using, my friend, a drone under 250 grams to require a flyer ID and an operator's ID. I fly the same. This is the small one. This is the one that I use to record over public buildings, people and everything else. This is what I would use to report. However, you're trying to hold him to a different class of drone that, quite frankly, he's not using. This is, up to, this is those officers at the moment. I'm not. I'm going to be arrested, am I? Under the Police Reform Act. So I'm going to be arrested under Section 50 of the Police Reform Act. OK, so this is never going to stick in a court. They're going to arrest him under Section 50 of the Police Reform Act. It lasts, allows them to ask for the name and address if they believe you're engaging or have been engaging in antisocial behaviour. That's behaviour that is likely to cause harass, alarm or distress. Now, in order no, to cause so I'm alarm, now, yeah? harassment 15. or distress, there oh, has to be a complaint. Yeah, OK, guys, so there we see uh, Newbury Police, Coley Burks. Um, he ends up getting himself arrested for Section 50. Um, and as I explained during Section 50, um, it will allow them to arrest him because he's refusing to provide his details um, because behaviour that causes or is likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to simply get thrown out. He's not going to identify himself. There's no court in the land that are going to take him anywhere for it. He can be reported. They can try and let him off with a caution, but he would simply refuse use that now once again guys if you are being threatened with alarm uh, uh, of causing harassment alarm or distress uh, under threat of arrest or threat of aggression from the police I would always hand uh, my personal details over however I would also inform the police officers that were actually doing that that I will be seeking a civil suit against them personally for abuse of power and of course against the authority for which they represent when we take these steps enough, guys, they will stop this bullying tactic. Remember, the police are there to serve us. Okay, you pay their wages. I wouldn't advise ever being rude to them. They are human beings. They are trying to do a job. But in this particular instance, Coley tells them that he's using it for his YouTube channel. They clearly know who he is. This is just a display of force and a, something that's completely unnecessary. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, keep up to date. I'm going to find more stuff. I'll scrutinize it for you guys. Look at other what auditors are doing. I don't always agree with them. I do sometimes, sometimes work and, and fair on the side of the law. Uh, well, not the law, just those who are supposed and given charge to upkeep it. So like, subscribe, and I look forward to speaking to you all again soon.